My name is Eloise. Over the series we've been looking at functions. So far we have studied three different families of functions. We looked at linear functions, quadratic functions and hyperbolic functions. In each of the functions we investigated how the graphs changed when we changed the a and q values in the formula and described our findings. We plotted different graphs using tables of values for x and y, and also compared formulae and graphs with each other. In this lesson, we are going to compare these three types of functions with each other. We want to compare straight line graphs, parabole and hyperbole with each other. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe the effects of A and Q on the graphs of linear functions, quadratic functions and rational functions. In previous lessons, we looked at each of the three different families of functions and we decided to define their parent functions first. Let's start there again. If you remember, linear functions have a formula of the form y equals ax plus q. The parent function of the linear family is y equals x. The parent graph of this function is a straight line. Quadratic functions have a formula of the form y equals ax squared plus q. The parent function of the quadratic family is y equals x squared. The parent graph y equals x squared is a parabola. For the hyperbolic function family, the parent function is y equals 1 divided by x. This is the parent graph of the hyperbola. Having a parent function helped us to compare functions within the same family. If we know what the parent function looks like, all we need to do is to describe how the parent function changed to make the new function. When we change the a or the q values, the graph of the function will change in a specific way. Let's have a look at how changing these values changes the function for each of the three families of functions. We are going to start by looking at the effect of changing the a of a linear function. Here we have a graph with a equal to positive 2. Because the a value is positive, we know that the graph has a positive slope. This means that it slopes upwards from left to right. Let's compare this graph with the parent graph. Can you see that the slope of the graph is steeper than the parent graph? So we can say that if the a value in the formula is greater than 1, it will be steeper than the parent graph. Now have a look at this one. This is the graph of y equals half x. In this case, we can see that the slope of the graph is flatter than the parent graph. So if the a value in the formula is a number between 0 and 1, the graph will be flatter than the parent graph. The graphs that we just looked at all have positive a values. When we look at negative values for a, we find that the graph has a negative slope. It slopes downwards from left to right, like this graph with a equal to negative 2. 
we compared graphs with negative slopes to the graph of the function y equals negative x, which is a reflection of the parent function y equals x. If the slope of the graph is steeper than the graph of y equals negative x, then the a value in the formula is less than negative 1. If the slope of the graph is flatter than the graph of y equals negative x, like in this example, then the a value in the formula is a number between negative 1 and 0. In this case, it is negative a half. Now, what about the effect of changing the a of a quadratic function? Let's start by looking at what the positive graph looks like. If the a value is positive, the graph turns upwards. It has the turning point at its minimum point. Now let's see what happens if we change the a value. If we increase the a value, like in this example of y equals 2x squared, the new graph is thinner than the parent graph. So if the a value is greater than 1, the arms will be closer together. If the a value is between 0 and 1, the new graph is wider than the parent graph. The arms of the graphs are further apart. Just like in this graph of y equals a half x squared. If a is negative, the graph is reflected over the x-axis. This graph of y equals negative x squared is a reflection of the graph of y equals x squared. The reflected graph has the same shape as the positive graph, but it is upside down. It has a maximum turning point. Here are the graphs of y equals negative 2x squared and y equals negative a half x squared. The graph between them is the parent graph. Can you see which has an a value of negative 2 and which graph has an a value of negative a half? The graph that is thinner than the parent graph will have an a value of negative 2. The graph that is wider than the parent graph will have an a value of negative a half. Okay. Now for the third family of functions, the hyperbolic functions. Let's have a look at how changes in the A of the formula affect the parent graph. The parent graph of the hyperbole is y equal to 1 divided by x. Have a look at this graph of y equals 4 over x. The value of A is greater than 1. The new graph looks like and lies in the same quadrants as the parent graph. But it has been pulled away from the axes. If A is between 0 and 1, the new graph lies closer to the axes than the parent graph. This is the graph of y equals a half over x, so this graph has an A value of a half. If a is negative, the graph follows the same pattern, but now they lie in the second and fourth quadrants. Here is the graph of y equals negative 1 over x. This graph is a reflection of the parent graph. Here are the graphs of y equals negative 4 over x. Here we can see that if a is less than negative 1, the graph is pulled away from the axes. If the a lies between negative 1 and 0, however, the graph moves closer to the axes as we see here for the graph of y equals negative a half over x. Did you notice anything similar about all three of these families of functions? Well, I did. When we compared all of these functions, we saw something fascinating. For all these functions, a negative value for a causes the graphs to reflect in the x-axis. When a is negative, the line reflects to get a negative slope. The parabola reflects to look upside down, and the hyperbola reflects to fall in the second and fourth quadrant. 
Do you remember what the effect of changing Q is? No matter what family of functions we are looking at, a change in the value of Q shifts the whole graph up or down the y-axis. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to compare the parent graphs of each of these functions. They each have a Q value of 0. Now if we make Q equal to 2, look at what this does to each graph. The straight line graph shifts up by 2 units. The parabola also shifts up by 2 units and the hyperbola does the same. It also shifts up by 2 units. If we change Q to a negative number, we find that each of the graphs move down the y-axis. Let's choose Q equal to negative 2. The straight line moves down 2 units. The parabola moves down 2 units and the hyperbola moves down 2 units. Let's see now whether we can use what we know about A and Q and how they change these three types of graphs. I'm going to choose to make A equal to a half and Q equal to negative 1. Let's see if we can describe what this does to the graphs of the linear function, the quadratic function and the hyperbolic function. So the formula for the straight line graph will be y equals a half x minus 1. The half tells me that the graph will have a positive slope that is flatter than the parent graph. The Q tells me that the parent graph will move down by one unit. The formula for the parabola will be y equals a half x squared minus 1. The half tells me that the arms of the parabola will turn upwards and they will be wider than those on the parent graph. The Q tells me that the parent graph will move down one unit like this. Lastly, the formula for the hyperbola will be y equals a half over x minus 1. The a tells me that the parent graph will move closer to both axes like this, and the q tells me that the whole graph will move down by one unit. Now that we've compared the changes to the parent graph across all three families, it's your turn. Given a equals negative 3 and q equals a half, describe how the parent graphs of the linear function, the quadratic function and the hyperbolic function are changed. Then draw rough sketches of each graph. In this lesson we have made some connections between all the functions. I hope that you've noticed that although graphs may look very different, there are mathematical relationships between them. We just need to learn where to look for them.